Hi everyone, this is Ryan M. Collins from RyanMCollins.com and here we are with our second video in the Hello Perfect tutorial. If you're starting this video, you should have an Xcode window that looks exactly like this. If you don't, you either need to open your Xcode workspace that we made in the last video or you need to review the last video and make sure it does look like this. So, we've got our project, we've got our server, and we've got our library added. What we need to do now is we need to link them all together so that when we build, we can actually have that server app launch and so we can host our website. So, the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go in and hit the plus button here. I'm going to take the perfect library dot framework for perfect library OSX target, okay? And we're going to hit add and make sure that's for OSX because we're developing on OSX right now. That's where our server is going to live. All right. Second thing we need to do is configure our build settings. Now, most of the time, Xcode defaults to basic settings right here. You're going to need to hit all because we have some of the advanced settings that aren't normally configured in order to make this work. If you don't understand these, that's absolutely fine. A lot of people don't. As long as you follow along, it will work just fine. So you need to go down to the deployment section. And there's a couple of things that we need to configure there. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to find the setting that says deployment location. It is a no by default, and we need to make that a yes. Awesome. So then we need to look for the installation build products location, and we're going to set that to something custom. Okay. So what we're going to do is just double click on that. You can erase what's there, and you're just going to put dollar sign, open parenthesis, configuration, build, D-I-R, all in caps with underscores in the middle. And then we're just going to close that parenthesis. And we're going to hit enter. All right, that will bring multiple values, and that's fine. Next, we need to look for the installation directory right underneath that. And we are going to get rid of that. And we are going to put in perfect Oops, perfect libraries with the P and the L capitalized after a forward slash. That says forward slash perfect libraries. And then finally, skip installation needs to be a no. So as long as all four of those are complete, we can move on to the next step. We are, can actually make the handler and do the code part, which is awesome. Right. So. I like to click back on the general. I don't know why. That's just something that I do to keep it clean. I'm going to go over to my project folder right here. I'm going to right click on it. We're going to do new file. I am going to go to OSX source Swift. Hit next. We're going to call this Hello Perfect Handler. Okay. I'm going to keep it in the group Hello Perfect with the target Hello Perfect and hit create. I'm just going to I would just like to move that up in my project to the top. All right. So, so here's our boilerplate code. And this looks just like you've seen in, in every other add a new Swift file. So first thing I'm going to do is import perfect lib. Okay. And that might give you an error. It depends on which version of Xcode you're using, and it depends on if you follow the steps in the, the correct order. Mine doesn't seem to be giving me an error today. If it gives you an error, that's absolutely fine. It's just because the perfect library hasn't been built on your system yet and it doesn't know what it's looking for. So in order to initialize perfect or to start the, the server handler and everything, what we need to do is we need to call the public function um, perfect server module init. So that looks like this, public func and that's perfect server module init, okay? And we are just going to add our routes in here. And routes are basically, we're just going to tell it if the browser is asking for X, well, how do I handle that? So the first thing I'm going to do is router.handler.register globally. And what that's gonna do is tell the perfect server that, hey, I've got custom routes in here. I would like you, instead of just looking in the web route, I would like you to respond to the request 
that I'm putting in here with something custom. So how we're going to do that is we're going to do routing.routes, okay? And we're going to specify, oops, I'm sorry, we're going to use square brackets and we're going to specify the get method. And then we're going to put a space in there and put two more square brackets. And what we're going to look for is forward slash or um, we're going to look for index.html. And basically what we're saying in here is if the browser is using a get method to find either the, you know, the root directory or index.html, well, I'm going to set that equal to a closure. All right. So let's grab my closure here. And we're going to do underscore colon web response, right? Okay. In return index handler. Okay. And what that's going to say is basically routing dot routes, right? It's saying if, if the browser is using a get method and it's asking for just the, the root directory or it's asking for index.html, I'm going to take in, in res, the response and serve it from index handler. So then what that means is we need index handler. Okay. So once we have an index handler, we're going to... I'm sorry, that is a class. It is a class called index handler that we're going to use to handle the class, not a function. That's all right. I'm still fairly new with this as well. All right, so in our class that is an index handler, we need that to be a subclass of request handler. Request handler. Okay. And then request handler has a function called handle request. Amazing, I know. Okay. So what's going to happen is that the web response, it's going to return an instance of the index handler, which is the new class we have. And every time this is called, it's going to call the handle request function. So inside that, we need to take the response dot. And we're just going to append a body string. Mm -hmm. And we are going to call that hello, perfect, okay? And then response.completed callback, all right? And that is a function, so we need to, to call that. And then what that's going to do is when the browser gets forward slash to get the root or index.html, it's going to activate this closure, which pulls the web response in return, index handler. It's going to return an instance of the class index handler, which is a subclass of request handler. It's going to handle that request. So it's going to take web request and web response and return it. And then we're going to take the response. We're going to append a body string, hello perfect, to basically print that to the screen. And then we're going to tell it we've request completed callback, meaning we're done adding things. Go ahead and do this. All right. So now that that's in there, this is actually our application, and if I've done this correctly, I open a new browser window here, and I'm going to go ahead over here, and all right, so we're going to change our target to the Hello Perfect project that we have we have just added. Let's see what that error is. All right, cannot subscript a value. I believe that we have this correct. And like I said, you're going to get some kind of odd errors ha happening inside of this because the library is not built. So we're going to try it. All right, so I'm going to edit the scheme. We're in here in the build configuration, debug is fine. We're going to run the executable perfect server http.app. And up in here in build, I'm just going to go ahead and add the perfect library OS X so that that builds in with everything. I hit close. All right, so our Hello Perfect target's going to build that app now. I'm going to hit run, and we're going to see if our errors go away. And they do. They do not. All right, so let's debug a little and see why that is happening. Cannot subscript a value of type string with an index of type string string. All 
All right. And that looks like I forgot a comma right there in our array. So let's see if we can do that. Awesome. So we're getting some warnings about Swift 3. So you don't have to worry about that because Swift is, Perfect is currently updating that for Swift 3. Um, I'm using the latest beta of Xcode, so you'll see that. Okay, Perfect Server did launch. So here it is. I'm just gonna go ahead and click this button. It's gonna launch it in our web browser. Okay, I'm gonna bring that web browser over here and you'll note that that did actually happen. If you wanna see it again live, we'll just go ahead and hit that button. There it is, there's our website. It looks amazing. You can go ahead and move on to the next video and learn a little bit more advanced topics about Perfect.